Okay folks, this is Todd Coburn of Cal Poly Pomona with lecture 2 of Aero 3271. Today we're going to be continuing our look into plastic bending and we're going to be specifically focusing on Cozone's method. Last time we covered plastic bending in general. Then we focused on the elastoplastic method and we and we introduced the plastic bending shape factor. Today, since we're studying Cozone's method, we're going to look at what's different about this particular method of estimating plastic bending. Now, remember we looked last time at what a typical stress strain curve looks like in the first quadrant, where we have uh, this particular one has doesn't have a defined yield point, so we see the stress strain relationship. Now, we also looked at how uh, the elastoplastic stress strain curve looked, that idealization, but now what we're going to do is look at the cozone stress strain curve. What Cozone does, uh, actually he assumes a fictitious distribution of stress, a trapezoidal distribution of stress to approximate the real stress strain behavior. What that really means is, it's kind of like what he's done, is approximate our stress strain relationship as what is shown here. He's going to have a uh, material which basically goes to the ultimate strain and it has the same FTU. But then he comes up with a fictitious value, FO, which actually idealize, uh, idealize, that's what the trapezoid looks like, the shape of the trapezoid that gives you the same moment capability as the real stress strain curve. Let's take a look at how that works. So we see a section subjected to a bending moment here. That bending moment causes a linear strain distribution and the linear strain distribution causes a nonlinear stress distribution as shown in figure C. With Cozone's method what he does is introduce two coefficients, two, two constants of the material Fm and Fo. These are both two fictitious values which result in the same moment carrying capability as the real stress strain curve. So if uh, we're going to find that FM is typically about equivalent to what FTU is and FO is a fictitious value that sets the, si the shape of the trapezoid. Okay. Now whenever we're implementing Cozone's method we're first going to look at a table of properties to find out if we have FM and FO for the material in question. If we do, we will use those values. If we don't, we're going to approximate our FM is FTU and our FO is FTY. Okay, so let's focus on what this trapezoidal distribution looks like. We can see here, once again, the trapezoidal distribution on the section. And what we're going to do is look at how that moment develops or how to compute that moment. Let's take everything above the neutral axis and focus on that little trapezoid. We could idealize it as two shapes, a rectangular shape and a triangular or bending shape. So we've got it with subscripts R and B. We can see that if we look at each of these in turn, we could see the two portions of the bending moment. If we say the bending moment little m sub r, which is the moment carried by the rectangle, and little m sub b, which is the moment carried by the triangle. Now, if we look at that, our FB shown in the figure is just FM minus FO. Okay, and that means the little moment carried by the bending portion, if we just take that since the stress is just MC over I, we could rearrange that to say M sub B is just that FM minus FO times I over C. Okay. If we then look at the rectangular piece, this is kind of like the elastoplastic moment, but with just a value of FO instead of FTU. We can see that, okay, we can take that stress, FO, and if we sum it up across the YDAs, we see that actually YDA is just twice the Q, right? Because we've got Y times the Q above the neutral axis and Y times the Q below the neutral axis. So it's just FO times two times the first moment of, the, of that area, where that area is just half the section. The total moment there then is the summation of these two values, FM minus FO times I over C plus 2QFO. Now we're actually not going to calculate FO exactly like this, so stick with me. All right? So that means we can plug in our values and write the equation this way. If we now take this 
this value, 2q over i over c, we're going to introduce that as the cozone shape factor. Now remember, last lecture we introduced the plastic bending shape factor, which is the ratio of the plastic bending allowable to the elastic bending allowable. This is a different shape factor. It's analogous, but not the same thing. This cozone shape factor, or the cozone section shape factor, is 2q over i over c. It's a geometric property. It also is a measure of how much plastic capability we have, but it's not the same as our plastic bending shape factor. So with that said, we're using a lowercase k here for 2q over i over c. And some typical values for k are shown in this table. If we have lumped areas, we can see that our factor is 1. What that means is if you do an elastic analysis and a plastic analysis, you get the exact same number. We already saw from elastoplastic analysis that the shape factor for a rectangular section is 1, 5, and that's true for Cozone's method as well. In fact, what we're going to find is the more area we have new, the near the neutral axis, the more help we'll get by doing plastic bending analysis. The less area that's near the neutral axis, the less plastic bending analysis will help us. A lump section like the first one shown here is already very efficient for carrying bending because mo all the area is pushed as far away from the centroid as possible Therefore, the, it, it, it gets no benefit from a plastic bending analysis. But if we have a stubby section where all the, like an, an, a reverse hourglass section where all the area is at the neutral axis, then when your material is at FTU, top and bottom, it's only a tiny fraction of the total capability of this material. So the more area we get near the neutral axis, the more help we'll get from plastic bending analysis. The less area that's near the neutral axis, the less help we'll get because it's already a more efficient section. Therefore, a rectangular section is going to have a, a cozone shape factor of 1, 5. If we get an hour lack glass section like the one showed near the bottom there, we get 4 thirds. But if we get a diamond, now we've got even more area at the centroid, that's going to be 2.0. A circle also has a lot of material near the centroid, near the neutral axis, so that's a 1, 7. Most other sections will be somewhere between about 1.0 and 1.5. Okay. Now we can actually calculate the cozone shape factor for our specific section by just calculating the first moment of the half the area of everything on one side of the neutral axis and then taking 2q over i over c. Now this method only applies for symmetric cross sections with symmetric stress strain curves. It will not work for other sections. It will give you erroneous results. Okay. So we can write the max and the min. So we can write our stress. This is our plastic bending stress. We're going to use that subscript C for say, saying that it comes from cozone. It's just Fm plus Fo times K minus 1. Even though over here to the left we introduced a um, cozone moment and it will give you the same number, the best way to do this is calculate first the stress F sub C. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this table below here. We're going to look at these materials. We're going to find our material. If our material is here, we'll take the FM and the FO from that table. We'll plug those into these this formula, and we'll calculate the K, the cozone shape factor for the section based on the geometric properties. We'll then, with that K, the FM and the FO, calculate the fictitious stress level. Once we have this, we'll calculate our corresponding cozone moment allowable using this equation. This is a plastic bending allowable. It is assuming a plastic bending is, uh, distribution of stress, but it's assuming that that plastic distribution is trapezoidal. That's basically cozone's method. It's rather straightforward and simple to use. If we compare our methods, we have the elastic bending method where we've got our stress is linearly changing from compression to ultimate. With Cozone's method, we see we go from FM to FO in a linear fashion, and then we have a discontinuity at the neutral axis, and then we get the uh, reverse behavior on the tension side. Our max moment for these are given like this, and therefore our plastic bending shape factor is still the same as it was before, that plastic allowable versus the elastic allowable. So, Quick solution procedure, we're going to verify that our section is symmetric about the centroidal axis. We're also going to make sure that the stress-strain curve is symmetric. 
we then sketch our section, idealize our properties, idealize our, uh, choose a reference axis, and calculate our properties for that. We're then going to calculate our first moment of half the section. We're going to go ahead and check if we already have the section shown here in this table, we can just use the shape factor from that. Otherwise, we will use the Q that we calculated and calculate the cozone shape factor for using this equation. We then find our table and get our FM and FO for the material. Now, if our material is in this table, we're going to use that FM and FO. If it's not in this table, we will go to our appendix of the handbook. We will take FTU and FTY, and we will assume that FTU is FM and FTY is FO. Got that? We then calculate our fictitious stress or our modulus of rupture for cozone, which is given by this equation, and then we calculate our bending moment. We can then calculate our shape factor and compare to other estimates of plastic bending. Make sense? Pretty simple. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have a rectangular section and we want to find all this stuff. The elastic moment, the plastic, elastoplastic moment, we already did that last time. Cozones method using FM and FO and then cozones method using FTU and FTY as approximations. We construct our table, come up with our properties, calculate MC over I, plugging in FTU, that gives us our M sub E. We saw this last time. Using an elastoplastic analysis, since this is rectangular, we know that our plastic bending shape factor is 1.5. That tells us that the allowable is going to be 18.75. Same example as last time. Now we do a cozone analysis, right? That means we go and find the material. We choose the material. We find the FM and FO. And using those, we calculate our modulus of rupture after we've calculated our cozone shape factor. We find we get the same cozone shape factor as plastic bending shape factor, but it gives us a different allowable. And that's because the cozone method only uses FM and FO, not FM and FM. So our cozone allowable is given by this. It's close to uh, our elastoplastic, a little less than our blastoplastic analysis, right? Now, if we had instead used the approximation of FM equals FTU and FO equals FTY, we would have gotten these kind of numbers, which is fairly close and a little bit conservative from using cozones FM and FO. That's all there is to it. Piece of cake. Let's look at some conceptual questions. Remember this question? What's the max stress? That's right. FTU is the most it can go to. What's the max elastic moment? Same as last time. What is the max elastoplastic moment? Remember that? Okay. What's the shape factor for plastic bending? Take the ratio of those two. Now, what's the shape factor? If the shape factor for cozone is 1.5 and the shape factor for elastoplastic is 1.5, does this mean the cozone predicts the same max moment as elastoplastic analysis? Hmm, think about that for a minute. No. Why do you think? Well, remember this, FM and FO. FM is basically FTU, FO is basically FTY. So we have a trapezoidal distribution of stress. The elastoplastic method assumed a rectangular distribution of stress. If our FO was equal to FM, then we would get the elastoplastic analysis, same number. Since it's not, since it's less, we get a little bit lower number. So cozone is a little more accurate than elastoplastic. It's only slightly more complicated, and it gives a fair, fairly good estimation for our plastic moment allowable, assuming that uh, relative to a more rigorous analysis that's harder to do. Make sense? Okay, now let's try a new question. Let's say we have this section. What's the shape factor for elastic bending for this according to cozone? What do you think? That's right. It is an I section. That means it's somewhere between 1.0 and 1.5. The fatter that is, the wider the web is, and the, uh, the, as the web gets wider and wider and it gets stubbier and stubbier, that factor will get closer to 1.5. In fact, when this is so stubby that it's a rectangle, it's 1.5. As it gets more hourglass, it gets smaller and smaller. 
if it was such that the web is completely skinny and those flanges are really wide and thin, then that would be close to 1.0. Does that make sense? How do we determine the shape factor for cozone? Calculate 2Q over I over C. This means that you must know how to calculate Q. We learned that in statics. It's the first moment of the area on everything on one side of the neutral axis. That's all I have for you. Make sure you do the homework as many times as you need to to understand this.